Hello and welcome to Community Conversation, the show that's for and about the people who live in Reading. My name is Kevin Vent and I'm going to be your host for this episode. And in this episode I have two people that are kind of starting a new group, new program in town called the Reading Neighbors Network. So we have Tom Model and Marianne Kinnan. Nice to hear you here today. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so I want to kind of start with you, uh, Tom. What is the Reading Neighbors Network? It's a group that has come together to help support people who are interested in aging in place in Reading hmm. and in the process create a sort of venue for socialization and sharing of information related to aging and staying in your own home and at the same time make Reading an age-friendly community. Okay, so, so how do you go about uh, uh, supporting people who want to stay in age in place in their homes? What, what kinds of activities do you do? You mentioned socialization, but what kinds of specific things do you do? Well, it is, it's a club format, basically. Okay. And we've structured ourselves after an organization that's been operating in Lexington since 2008 mm -hmm. called Lexington at Home. They have four chapters of four, about 40 people each, about 160 total. Uh, we have just launched as of the 12th of June, and we have about 40 members. So okay. we will be moving along slowly so that we make sure we train is running on the track, so right, to speak. Right, right, right. But it's bringing people together that have common interests, not only in the fact that they are, we're all aging, hopefully, that's the good news. <laughs> And um, as they age, they want to remain in their own homes as, t as opposed to the alternatives, which are mm -hmm. to go off into more institutional settings like sure. continuing care retirement communities and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, we'll meet in people's homes and there'll be programs, it'll be monthly meetings, and it's, it's not a requirement, uh, but hopefully people will be drawn together by common interests, both sure. in the underlying theme and we're going to form interest groups. Mm -hmm. Everything from coffee clutches to kayaking to theater attending and so forth. Okay, so coffee clutches and kayaking, very diverse <laughs> uh, interests. How does that kind of socialization help someone uh, stay at home and be able to age in place? Marianne, you're a nurse and have that right. background, so why don't you comment well, on I that? Well, I think a, a lot of what um, Tom just said feeds into this concept. First of all, I think most people want to stay in their own homes. If they have mm -hmm. that option, they'd rather be in familiar surroundings and sure. continue with their independence. Um, as a healthcare provider, I know that's a very important piece to helping people, as is socialization. And mm -hmm. many studies have shown that people who have a good social link, social network, thrive and do far better either emotionally, mentally, physically. Um, and I think all of us as people want to uh, be with other people and also want to have the benefit of some educational opportunities, learning opportunities, and abilities to kayak or, or, or read or go to the theater, whatever it sure. happens to be. Um, so this group will provide all of that as well as a support system for other needs um, mm -hmm. as time goes on. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're fairly new to the group. I kind of what motivated you to get involved? Well, several things actually. First of all, I have a friend who is on the steering committee. We've okay. known each other many years and we were both in health care. Um, the, what the group is hoping to provide interests me very much. Mm -hmm. uh, and also I think the, one of the, the problems that people have as they age and, and otherwise is that they don't have the support system when they may need it. Okay. And uh, f even briefly, mm -hmm. for example, someone to run an errand, someone to take them to a physical therapy appointment, something like this. That interested me a lot, to be able to have that, uh, um, that opportunity available if and when I needed that. Right, right. It's, it's an anecdotal support kind of thing. Okay. It's not meant to replace services. I mean, sure. we've been working with Jane Burns here from Reading, uh, mm -hmm. Administrator for Elder and Human Affairs, and Dan O'Leary from Middle S Mystic Valley Elder Services. They provide services in a formal sense through the government and right. that kind of funding. Right. This is not meant to replace, it's mainly a sharing of information because it's amazing. Collectively, we know a lot, but individually, mm -hmm. there are big gaps in what we know about what's available to us today. Yeah. So in a lot of ways, it's intended to kind of be an informal supplement to the types of services Absolutely. that the town yes. can offer. Yes, and, and a fun one that's fun. And a, and a fun one, fun one that's fun, that's one yep. offering some of yep. those things. Yep. So what kind of events do you have planned coming up? I know that Well, uh, we've just started, started out, we'll, as I say, we had our launch on the 12th of, uh, of June, June. Yeah. and we will have our first formal meeting in August. Okay. It'll be a backyard event where basically we're going to come together and find out about these interest groups and who is interested and we'll pick a lead okay. person for each interest sure. area and then people will converse. The organization is meant, we, we've structured it, but as it goes on, members will determine what form it takes mm -hmm. and that's I think essential to the sustainability and the vibrancy of the organization. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So, so what do you uh, kind of foresee as, as? Do you foresee less of a formal kind of structure? based organization, more of an informal kind of... Uh, well, there, it'll be formal in, only in the sense that there will be planning as to the monthly okay. events. There'll be featured speakers, and of course, being north of Boston, there's an enormous set of resources sure. to draw on of all kinds. Um, first couple of meetings in the fall, we plan to talk about things like an antiques roadshow because mm. we have here living in Reading one of the foremost antiques dealers, retired, and his son now, sure. I guess, did... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Deval Patrick's house. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, then there'll be a session, for example, on the Shine Counseling, which mm -hmm. is to advise people about medications and save them money. Mm -hmm. But then more fun things, perhaps delving into international affairs, uh, the Camden Conference from Maine has mm -hmm. all these archives of things. Okay. Um, speakers from Harvard or, or wherever. Sure. I would think given that it's an election year also. I mean, there's plenty yes. of interesting topics to talk about uh, just in general, but also for people who are, are looking at specific things that are going on in, in the country and right. how they react to them. That's right. So as you talk about the coffee clutches, that's the type of thing yep. that could come up. Yep. Um, so, uh, Marianne, I just wanted to ask you, as, as again, as a health professional, mm -hmm. when someone is trying to age in place, um, you, you mentioned the socialization is, right. is an important piece and, and, and part of that. Uh, when a person is seeking to socialize, kind of how do typ people typically reach out when they don't have this type of organization to, to go for? Well, I, I think that can be problematic for a lot of people. Um, some people uh, go through the senior center and they use that fairly mm -hmm. actively. Um, some use their neighbors, for example, for services or for um, socialization. For a lot of people, they're alone. And having yeah. done some work in community health care, I've seen many people in homes who are either alone or whose family members are their sole caregivers and they're in the home and they're very, very isolated. So to have this type of an opportunity to, to reach out either for, as Tom said, some short-term services where sure. they really get out into a social setting for education or a program right. would be wonderful for them. Yeah, it, It's really an opportunity, Kevin. I mean, people go to a church because they're interested in spiritual thing and that's mm -hmm. the focus for them getting together. There's a garden club, a very vibrant var garden club. Right. People come together for gardening interests. Well, the interest here is people want to stay in their own homes because they love their own homes. It's also very much more economical than going to any sure. institutional yeah, setting. Sure. So beyond that aging in place, it's a broad, much broader than any particular church or garden club or any specific thing. And that's what brings people together. And that's why we say Reading Neighbors Network, socializing with a purpose. Mm. Purpose is to age in place, but also have fun, share common interests, right. and so forth. Right. Well, it sounds like a very interesting concept. Now you're just getting started, but it yes. sounds like something that uh, could really grow in town over the years. And as we know, the the aging population, I mean, you said we're all aging, and that's true, but but the but the you know population is aging, and we, and we know the largest growing group of people in the country is seniors. So, Well, we have about a little under 4,000 over 65 in Reading right now. Okay. And by, I think, uh, in the early 20s, it's going to be 7,500 or 8,000. Wow. And so you're talking a third of the population. E exactly, yeah. exactly. And it's interesting because, as I said, we benefited from Lexington and what they've done over right. the years and built on that. But very recently, Concord has con contacted Lexington and us. They're interested okay. in it. Arlington has contacted them and us about, again, this kind of organization. Sure. This organization is really a parallel to the village concept, which started with Beacon Hill Village in 1998. Mm -hmm. But it's less, less a formal organizational, almost quasi-business with an executive director. It's operated by virtue of the people. Our steering committee replaces right. that. Right. All right. Interesting. So, it's, so it looks like uh, just getting started, but it's already kind of part of a movement in the area. Um, and probably other towns will be joining as they see the successes that you have and that some of these other towns Hopefully. have along the way. So if someone were interested, you mentioned you have 40 members already signed up and, and interested. But if someone were interested in, con in getting involved, how, how would they do that? Um, there, we have a brochure, and that will be at, available at the library. Okay. And we have a website, which is www.readingnn.club. 
www.reddingnn.club. Right, and there was an article in this Thursday's Chronicle which okay. summarized what we've, where we've been, sure. how we've gotten here, and has reference to that uh, website. Sure. So people can contact you through the website. If yes, there's there's a one page has contact information and an email address. Okay. In, info at reddingnn.club. Okay, excellent. So if someone were interested, they can, can yes. get a hold of you there. Yes. All right, well, that sounds excellent. It sounds like you're uh, really uh, just getting in on the ground floor of what's a swell of things that are going on in the area, and it looks like it's going to be something that's, that's very valuable. Well, we're excited about it. For our community. Excellent. Well, I thank you for being here today, Tom, and sharing a little bit about that. Thank you here, Marianne, yeah. for sharing your perspective as well, and, and uh, we look forward to hearing of the great successes that thank come you. Thank you. in the future. And so we thank our guests for being here today, and we thank you for watching. You're watching Community Conversation here on RCTV. We'll be back in just one moment.